Okay, from the other tutorial, you should now have three mega pieces, each consisting of the smaller cubes, and they should all be sharing a common floor, meaning they're all at the same height, which in my example is the green-red plane, as the plane made from the green and red axes, which is, as I'm rotating it, is now coming out of the screen. Okay. So at this point, we need to prepare this for printing. And one of the things that I talked about earlier is that we need to reduce the faces. This comes from all forms of manufacture. I think in earlier my example was that uh, in the case of a nut and a bolt, you put a bolt onto a nut and you can't have those, those diameters being exactly the same because the metal, the friction, the imperfection of manufacture is such that the pieces won't fit together. So instead, you have a slight gap designed into the two pieces such that they'll fit. So in the case of these mega pieces, each of the faces that will be touching another piece, let's say where the green and red pieces touch, they need to be slightly reduced to give more of a space between those two mega pieces. And so we're going to do that now. Now the first thing that we're going to do is save the file if you haven't done it recently. Uh, give it an another name, whatever version you're on. Um, give it another version number just so you have it. Because the next thing that we're going to do is uh, going to be something that we can't undo very easily. We can within the application, but you're not going to be able to recover from the files if you need to later. So what you want to do is select all of the cubes, either do a bounding box around everything, or if you're using a Mac, you use Command A, or if you're using a PC, Control A, and that'll select all of the smaller groups, which are the smaller cubes. The next thing you do is go to the Edit menu. You go to where it says uh, 27 solid groups. You should have 27 because there should be 27 uh, smaller cubes. Move to the right and go to where it says explode. Now once you've exploded you should now see blue dots. They shouldn't be groups anymore such that when you deselect it by clicking on the gray area and click somewhere you should be now just selecting that face of each of these smaller cubes. Okay once you've done that let's save the file again another version and then we're going to do a few kind of interesting things. So orient it so you can start seeing the pieces. And what you want to do is start selecting just the edges. So you don't want to have a face selected or multiple faces. You just want to select those lines where you're connecting faces that are parallel to each other. Coplanar, if you're mathematically inclined. So select one and hit delete. If it did what I had and it just deletes the line and you're left with the two faces and they've now been merged, that is what you want to see. If you see something else happen, you're going to want to go to edit and undo erase and then try again. So we're going to do it again. So this face here is coplanar with this face. And so I'm going to come over here and delete that line there, and then that line that oops see there I did a face so there do that line and you're probably gonna to have to move around you can do it across mega pieces uh, just you need to remove all of the ones that look like the ones I'm talking about I'll do some red ones I'll reorient just so I have a better view of this and I'll do a few more um, here's an example. I don't want to delete this. This line is between this face, which is oriented vertically, and this face, which is horizontal. That one is necessary, so I should not delete that. But I should delete this one, because this one is connecting this face and this face, which are coplanar. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the rest of them and come back in a minute, and hopefully you will do the same. Okay, I've now completed doing the pieces. 
I'll do a once over and I suggest you do the same rotating or orbiting all around your mega pieces to look for any more lines that are joining coplanar faces. Meaning, again, anytime where you see like a line where you've got faces that should otherwise be merged. If you see any, go ahead and delete them. When we're done with this, I recommend saving the file again, another version. At this point, we're ready for reducing. So in our efforts, we've made these smaller cubes 10 millimeters on each side. So if the sides are 10 millimeters, it turns out we should be reducing the faces by 0.2 millimeters. That's the same as 2%, uh, basically. So it's a 2% reduction um, such that the pieces will fit. Every face that is going to be touching another face, we need to reduce the uh, edge by 0.2 millimeters. Now it won't cause a problem if you do every single face all around every mega piece, but technically you only need to do the internal ones, the ones that will be touching other pieces. Now if you do all of them, including the exterior ones, then yours is going to have a better chance of being able to fit with the mega pieces from other students and be able to create some kind of uh, mega sculpture, if you will. So this is how we do it. We uh, change tools, we grab the push-pull tool, and as you know from the push-pull tool, as you move your mouse over any face, you should start seeing blue dots highlighting that face that is temporarily selected or instantaneously selected. And if I click and start dragging, it's automatically going to start operating on that face. And if you look in the lower right corner on the status bar, you'll see distance. And in the case of a negative number, like negative 3 millimeters right now, that's showing that if I let go of the mouse button right now, it will have reduced that face by 3 millimeters. Negative is in reduction. If I went the other way and it's a positive, right now it's saying it's going to increase the face by 5.4 millimeters. Okay, so we're going to want to reduce this by 2 millimeters. So what I do is I usually start going in the negative direction so I see a negative number and then I just type in 0.2. So I'm going in the negative direction and I type in 0.2 and hit enter. And you should now see distance 0.2 millimeters and it will have reduced. And just to make sure what I can do is use the tape measure and check that face and if it's reduced it should be reduced so 10 millimeters minus 0.2 millimeters should be 9.8 millimeters and that's what we have here so I've now removed the reduced this face now I need to start doing the other ones so I'll do a bunch of these all the ones for one of the mega pieces so you can get the hang of it so there's one of the faces so I'll do this one so I start reducing it and I just go 0.2 millimeters then I do this one 0.2 millimeters, then this one will need to go 0.2 millimeters, this one needs to go 0.2 millimeters, and you also have to think about uh, the top because this is only too high so there's going to be another piece on top of this, so this goes down 0.2 millimeters. You rotate it if you need to using the O orbit tool. That 1.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 
I'll have to do this one, point two, this one, point two, this comes down, point two, this goes in, point two. That goes in point two. That goes in point two. And I have to go around the back side to get these last two faces over here. Point two. Oh. Let's undo that. I didn't do that correctly. So start dragging it. Type in point two. Drag in point two. Again, if you're unsure about anything, use the tape measure and just check. Okay, so in this case it's 9.6, and that's because I had reduced the hidden side, the back side over here, by 0.2, and the side by 0.2. So it's kind of being reduced in both directions, and so it was 10 minus 0.2 minus 0.2, right, resulting in 9.6. Okay, you'll need to do this to all three of your mega pieces uh, to be complete. And uh, I, I looked out where all my bottom pieces were at the same level. So if you do have to reduce one of your bases, you're going to have to adjust its height to make all of them correct. So I'm going to just artificially reduce the bottom face of the red one by 0.2 to show you what's going to happen. So I'm reducing it 0.2 like all the other faces. Okay, now when I move reorient this, you might not see it unless you zoom in really close. But see how I'm now at the floor. The red green plane is exactly horizontal. And you'll see how the red piece, at least over here, you can see the blue behind it. That would not happen if the red was at the same level. But because I reduced the face, I moved the floor of the red piece upwards 0.2 millimeters. So now it's higher than the other two. So to bring it back down to the ground, I'm going to have to lower it. And you might have to do the same thing with your cubes. So what you want to do, zoom out a little bit, hit the selection tool, and then you're going to have to triple click on the red piece. So one, two, three. Triple click because that's going to select all of the faces and edges for the entire cube. See how they're all now selected and I'm going to need to lower the whole piece by 0.2 millimeters so you're going to need to select all of them and then hit M for move tool or use the one that is over here on the large palette toolbar or this one on the smaller toolbar and at this point you're need to go and pick one of the points and it don't necessarily just pick something on a face but something on an edge or better yet on a corner and when you select that, click and drag, and if you move, start moving upwards, you should see a tooltip on blue axis. If you see that correctly, uh, you're doing good. What you now want to do is, while you're clicking and dragging, take your other hand and hold down the shift key. Once you hold down the shift key, the blue axis, the dotted blue axis, is going to be wider. And no matter where you move the mouse to, left, right, up, or down, it's going to keep the red mega piece only going along the red axis and so to do that you now want to lower it to the rest of the pieces so what you want to do is while you're clicking and dragging you can move the mouse pointer over to one of the lower piece, uh, lower corners of the green or blue pieces and if you look in the lower right status bar you'll see that the length is 0.2 millim millimeters that means that we've now lowered it 0.2 millimeters, and so they're all going to be at the right height. And if I let go right now, first letting go of the mouse button and then of the shift key, it's going to leave it right there on the floor. But I'll also show you another way of doing it. Well, let's just say in, we were going, moving it up and down and we didn't hold down the shift key. What I could do is I know I have to lower it, so I could just go downwards until I see on blue axis. And once I see it going downwards, below the floor. Now I change the length and just while I'm holding the mouse button type point two and hit enter. And that's another way of doing it. So now if I move to the red green plane you'll see how they're all, no matter how far I zoom in, 
They're all at the exact same height. They're all at the floor. Okay, so that's what you might have to do if the bottommost part of one of your mega pieces needs to be reduced. So pause it and finish reducing the other faces of the green mega piece since I hadn't done that yet. Okay, so I finished uh, the last green piece, and what you should now see are these uh, slightly odd reduced faces. Slightly odd because uh, on the one hand it, it looks strange if you're doing a purely mathematical um, non-reduced set of cubes. Uh, you wouldn't see these little sort of jogs like you do in the case of the red. Right now I'm kind of zooming in on part of it where you see this little jog in the lines like it's going up like the side of a wall and then it jogs over and then goes back up. You're only seeing that because we reduced this face to the right and we did by 0.2 millimeters and this face up here went to the left 0.2 so the jog that you're seeing here should be 0.4. Now you don't have to check this anywhere I'm just kind of helping you kind of understand that the size of this gap is because we move this wall to the right and this wall to the left simultaneously. The other odd thing that you're going to notice, and it's completely okay to see it like this, um, are cases like this where you have an inside corner. Depending upon how we did things, um, you're going to see a few oddities like this, where um, you've, you reduce faces and you get this little like, I don't know, baseboard molding kind of thing happening. That's completely okay and expected. And the reason why is because as we were deleting lines, uh, any hidden blocks were not getting combined. And there's a hidden block in there that we didn't see before. And so it wasn't getting combined with all the rest of them. Now, if you really wanted to fix this, you could do it, to select the f face of this little hole bump out and then grab the push pull tool by hitting P or hitting that icon going over to where you see the face that you have selected and bring it down until it's at the same level as somewhere next to it and when you let go you should see the bump out gone now you should still see a bunch of lines and if you're able to great go ahead and delete those lines as long as you don't see any faces disappearing you should only see the lines being deleted. Then there's this weird stray line there. So if you can do that, that would be great. But it's not required. You know, so you'll, if you really zoom in, you'll see a couple more of those little artifacts. Okay. The main thing is that you needed to reduce the faces in order to print. Um, deleting those little lines, we can take care of that uh, when we prepare your cubes for printing. Okay, when you're done, I'm going to say save as, and definitely at this point you would use final. If you used final before, you can say something like final two, or really if this is the final one, or whatever you want. So this is the final, truly final version, the one that will be ready to print. Thank you.